Vibes. We all feel vibes. We see them. We hear them. But where do vibes come from and why are they so important? Barack Obama invented vibes on April 20th, 1969, and after some thinking, I realized how much the vibe of something really matters. Pick a movie you've watched. What about that movie sticks out from everything else you've seen? Blade Runner is decorated with cool neon lighting, torrential rain, and cool visuals, yet I still don't remember a single thing about the story. But the way they build up the atmosphere, the way they engulf me in this world, is what I remember it by. I remember about two years ago I pooped my pants at my grandma's house. I went up to her and said, Grandma, I... I've pooped my pants, I need more pants. And it's not so much the action that I remember the most, but the downtrodden journey, the depressing aura, the wonk of shame that I experienced in my soft serve flavored pants that was really stuck with me. The whole vibe of the situation. Maybe you got your ass whooped by your mom and had a really tense car ride to school. Maybe you confessed your crush and had to sit at the same table group the next day. What really lingers and helps differentiate all these things in your head isn't just the memory itself, but the feeling you got around it. That's the vibes, baby. Dead Space, Bioshock, Shadow of the Colossus, Skyrim, Dark Souls, Borderlands, Pokemon, all extremely memorable and recognizable in large part due to the atmosphere and the vibes you got while playing. Music and visuals, including color choices, all affect the atmosphere. So what about anime? Nope. 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 Anime most often has a neutral vibe. When you've seen the same cartoon regurgitated, the same colors, aesthetics, character designs, wonky, oh, it's time to laugh now, music tracks, and most recently, the same fucking world, you don't get that unique feeling you're just watching. Yeah, it might be entertaining, but what was unique about, uh, what was aesthetically unique about Chaos Head? Was it the character design? Uh, was it the setting? No. The music? No. And thus, I remember myself watching it only because I saw the thumbnail while browsing through Crunchyroll. It's aesthetically unremarkable. There's nothing that sets that apart from the droves and droves of anime in my head. I enjoyed that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I also know that in three years there'll be nothing to remember it by. Because both these shows had a neutral vibe, they didn't aesthetically leave an impression on me, even if story-wise I was entertained. Shows like Punchline that apparently only aired in my timeline, or this anime called Gunsword that I watched like six years ago still sit in my head even if the story was weak. But what happens when you combine a super cool atmosphere with compelling characters and an entertaining story? You get an anime that stands the test of time, something that I vibrate remembered and identified with for years, you get Snooki and JWoww. And also Samurai Chompthu, one of the sickest and most memorable shows I've ever watched, and something I assumed everyone had already seen, but apparently not. Samurai Chompthu follows a trio of complete opposites. Fu is a waitress who encounters two samurai, one named Mugen and the other named Jin. After some convincing and a few crazy ass sword fights, she gets both of them to accompany her on a massive journey to find a certain samurai. This one beautiful shit post is what inspired the intro to this video. And I can say that this image personifies my feelings while watching Samurai Chomplu in my car. Talking about some, Sir, do you have a child? You need to put some pants on. This is a children's hospital. First off, I'm incredibly immersed. Chill out. Most anime is in your face. Punchline here, gag here. Big reaction time. Blah, wow, wow, wow. Samurai Chomplu is incredibly chill and fun to watch on multiple levels. Each episode gives you a peek at a different day in the trio's lives. One day they might be having an eating contest. Maybe they're inhaling gamer fumes, or maybe they're having an unforgettable encounter with a random person. The point is, it doesn't matter what they're doing because it's always entertaining. There's well thought out action, occasional feels, comedy, and a lot of incentive to keep watching. If the main arc of a single episode isn't entertaining, the character's journey to get to that conclusion sure as fuck is. The first episode gives promise of extremely well choreographed fights, some badass main characters, and a fun journey. It absolutely delivers. At the start, I can admit that the lack of cohesion can feel kinda weird because there's not much continuity between the episodes, and some of the side stories feel a little forced. I think Choplu uses a lot of elements that Watanabe hadn't mastered until Space Dandy, yet the longer you stick with the series, the more attached you become to it and the main three characters. Suddenly, a lot of the RNG encounters that you know will never happen again become many times more interesting, and the story really comes together until the ultra-hype, ultra-satisfying climax. Fu can be a little annoying, but I think that's kind of the point. While I spent most of my time wanting to sock her in the mouth, I really appreciated how she wasn't some generic, whiny, oh, help me girl that some 14 year old kid can self insert and imagine himself saving. Fu gets shit done and I can respect that. Jin is a stoic and reserved dude with a super orthodox fighting style. You can tell he has this dark past and a lot more to him and as such, every time he was on screen was a blast. I loved hearing what he had to say and seeing what he can do. Mugen is a guy who I've always really related to. He's this unorthodox, sarcastic, cool guy who just doesn't care. Much like these guys. Mugen is a super iconic guy who I really enjoy watching. What strikes me about these two is that despite them being complete polar opposites, they're so badass. I had no idea that this strict, uptight dude would be such a fun and lovable addition to the story. Mugen is literally me. 
Look, he was the template of which the seventh grade me was based upon, and even though that should be making me cringe, I don't care, Mugen is sick. The chemistry between everyone blends really well, and there were moments that made me reflect and think about how real the dialogue felt. I'm liking this babe even more now. Did you see him? Did I see what? They're an incredibly strong point of the show. I can see someone having a foo lock screen or a gin flavored flashlight. There are very few anime that get action right in my eyes. One thing I can't stand is when characters are right in the middle of a crisp ass whooping and they stop the fight to start thinking or talking like, my god, that speed, where did he get his power? Or in Dragon Ball, they stop fighting so Krillin can yell, Goku! every five seconds. Do you want to know what courses through my mind when my mom delivers me a crisp ass whooping? It's not her hand. I've never felt such strength before. It's ow, ow, ow. And this anime provides the no bullshit taijutsu that I absolutely adore. Mugen breakdances while he fights, so out of nowhere he might pull some sick windmills. Jin is super fast and precise, so all his fights just leave you in awe. It's super cool. You can tell there's a lot of effort put into just choreographing the action and then animating it to look as crisp and nice as possible. I had to rewatch some of the fights several times just because I felt I needed needed to fully appreciate exactly what I was watching. If you came for the action, it's not gonna let you down there. Character design is also really good and unique. Mugen looks like Mugen and Jin looks like Jin, not like Kirito. My only complaint is that the anime isn't in very high definition. It's from 2005, so you can't find that sweet 1080p anywhere. If you don't care about that, Funimation actually has every episode up at 480p on YouTube. I'm pretty sure the music is responsible for about a fourth of my enjoyment of the series. There were times where I couldn't help but have a huge smile while watching Mugen kick ass with some hip-hop beats in the background. If you don't know, Shinichiro Watanabe is kind of with the shits, and has a super diverse and well-cultured music taste. Musical freak and uh, I like <laughs> so many kind of music. With tracks composed by No Hyabes and Fat John, who I don't really know, but he's black, so that's pretty cool. This anime has a great soundtrack. The hip hop thing mixed in with the samurai atmosphere is such an incredible combination that I had no idea it would work that well. Anyway, I really, really urge you to pay attention to what tracks are used and when they're used when watching the show. I can promise that it'll impress you. The dub is also really good. It's worth watching simply for Mugen pulling up saying, What's up? What's up? Hmm? You can tell they put in a lot of work to make a natural feeling dub. Watch the dub, and then download the soundtrack. There's like 40 plus songs, which I'm using in this video. Samurai Champloo is funny, it's serious, it's action-packed, it's perfect for, you didn't hear this from me, it's perfect for perhaps whipping out a gram or two with the boys. The story's a little bit rough around the edges at the start, I still think it's a fantastic watch and that you should give it a shot. If you're getting such a unique and incredible vibe, style, music, all of that and then some, it's just so memorable. However, if I told you this anime is for everyone, I'd be lying. Throughout the years, I've suggested this to two of my friends and both quit halfway through. Then they rewatched it and fucking loved it. I really think the second half is stronger than the first. I always thought Champloo was one of those shows that everyone starts off with, but apparently 66% of you haven't seen it, so all I can say is watch it. You can close the vid now if you want, I'm just, I'm just gonna say something incredibly genius, whatever. Did you know that our boy Shinichiro collabed with Anderson Pock and Flying Lotus? Then I started thinking, every one of the big three are based on a music genre. Cowboy Bebop is Bebop. Space Dandy was the disco era and Champloo is hip hop. Do you know how sick it would be to have music produced by like Flying Lotus with crazy bass lines from Thundercat and all these geniuses? Anyway, I just thought that would be crazy. I'm playing a song from the music video right now to give you an idea. Check it out, it's really cool. I gotta switch songs though, so. Yeah, this is awkward. See ya.